What happened to Abus Magomedov's cardio at the UFC fight night in Vegas last weekend? Abus was TKO'd by Sean Strickland after running out of steam just two rounds into a five round fight. Many people have expressed their shock and disappointment on social media since then. Now Abus has finally come out with a video statement on his YouTube channel. Let's look at his key points together and explore the science behind what he thinks has led to his downfall last Saturday. Konditionelle Probleme hat. Wie ich so jetzt die Lage so einschätzen kann, äh, ich war übertrainiert. Overtraining is a state in which an athlete does not recover from training and non-training stresses so that athletic performance is impaired in the medium to long term. The muscles, connective tissue and central nervous system need 24 to 72 hours to recover from a heavy training session. So it's generally crucial to get enough rest and recovery. Overtraining can lead to central nervous system fatigue, which can take anywhere from a few days to several weeks to recover from. With multiple canceled bouts since January, Abus had been preparing to fight for more than half a year, so it's not unlikely that he was overtrained. In order to prevent overtraining, it's important to periodize the training. This includes fine tuning the training schedule, planning for regular deload weeks and adding a taper phase before the fight. The taper phase is typically one to two weeks long. The training volume is reduced while maintaining the training intensity. Abus also expressed concerns about the acclimatization. Wegen der Klima hier, wegen der Umstände. Ich habe am Anfang gedacht, weil ich zu spät gekommen bin, weil da waren auch Jungs, die so genauso wie ich gekommen sind. Heat acclimatization is one of the most important methods to reduce mental strain and impaired physical performance in hot conditions. This should include repeated exercise in the heat in a well hydrated state over one or two weeks. Leading up to Abus's fight, his hometown Düsseldorf had temperatures of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. The temperature in Las Vegas was around 35 degrees Celsius. We did see Abus train hard in the heat after arriving in Vegas, however this was short before and during his weight cut so he was likely dehydrated. This could have been part of the reason why his cardio tanked during the fight. And there's another aspect to consider when it comes to acclimatization. Generally, a change in altitude of 2000 meters or more has a notable impact on sleep and athletic performance. However, some research indicates that even lower altitudes can have negative effects. There is a 580 meter difference in altitude between Düsseldorf and Las Vegas. Interestingly, a study from 1996 investigated this exact change in elevation. VO2max in trained endurance athletes was impaired significantly even at a lower altitude of 580 meters. The decline in VO2max appeared linear with ascent from sea level. Several days to a week should typically be enough to adapt to the altitude in Las Vegas. However, Abus could be more sensitive to the low oxygen levels. If elevation played a role in the fight outcome, the impact was likely rather small since Abus had almost two weeks to adapt. However, other factors like the jet lag and weight cut might have slowed down acclimatization. Jet lag can disrupt circadian rhythm, sleep, digestion, mood and energy levels. There's a 9 hour time difference between Düsseldorf and Vegas. As a general rule of thumb, it takes about 1 day per hour of time difference for your body to adjust to a new time zone. Abus arrived almost 2 weeks before his fight, so he likely had enough time to recover from his jet lag. When I watched Abus' last vlog before the fight, I noticed that he went through a pretty tough weight cut. I saw Abus skipping ropes, pedaling on the bike and hitting the pads in the sweatsuit for 45 minutes. Some of the methods looked rather outdated compared to those practiced by elite fighters like Alexander Volkanovsky or Leon Edwards, who both work with the fight dietitian Jordan Sullivan. Nowadays, many fighters cut weight comfortably in the sauna or hot bathtub. These modern methods of cutting weight are easier on the body and allow for better temperature regulation. Since the weight cut already puts a lot of stress on the body, it's debatable whether one should add even more strain through physical exertion. Here's what his coach had to say about the weight cut. I'm definitely not a weight cut expert, but I believe that this might have had a significant impact on Abus' performance in the octagon, especially considering all circumstances. Now we arrived at the night of the fight. Here's what Abus said about how he felt right before the fight. Schon auf dem Weg zum Ring habe ich gemerkt, irgendwas, als, als äh, hätte ich keine Kraft mehr so in der Art. When a fighter experiences a sudden and significant drop in energy and mental focus before or during a fight, this is often described as an adrenaline dump. Abus' body might have released adrenaline in response to the intense stress or excitement before this important fight. 
When this spike of adrenaline wears off, this can lead to a sudden feeling of fatigue. We can also observe this when a fight is interrupted. If a fighter was in the zone or in a state of flow before the disruption, they might find it hard to get back into their rhythm once the fight continues. However, it was Strickland who was poked in the eye and Abus looked pretty sharp after the interruption, so I don't think that this was too much of a factor here. A fighter might also experience an adrenaline dump when they feel close to a finish, but the opponent recovers. This could have been the case when Abus landed the head kick or when he was close to taking Strickland's back in the first round. It's also likely that he experienced a surge in dopamine if he felt like he was about to win or if he expected to finish Strickland early in a dominant fashion. When the anticipated reward doesn't occur, the subsequent drop in dopamine can contribute to the feeling of fatigue. I noticed this statement from Abus's coach in his last vlog before the fight. Now, I'm everything but a high-level fighter or MMA coach, but considering the circumstances, and the fighting style of the slow and steady volume striker, Sean Strickland, one could question, was it the right strategy to go all out in the first round? Also, Strickland had only been finished once at middleweight and it was by Alex Pereira, a former two division kickboxing world champion. As devastating of a loss this was, the good news is this can all be fixed. So don't write Abos off just yet. I think that during the first round, he showed that he can hang with the top contenders in the division when it comes to skill, but it was his cardio that cost him the fight. Do you see Abus bouncing back from this loss or do you think he doesn't have what it takes to be a top contender? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If he can make the necessary adjustments with his team, I believe that Abus can come back stronger from this. Watch this video next to learn more about training periodization for peak performance or check out this video to learn about the six warning signs of overtraining. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. As always, train hard, recover smart and fight easy.